So in this video, we are going to be going over scatter plots and trend lines. So these ones come up like maybe in science class when you're doing an experiment or you're taking a survey or something like that. For this one here, we got some video game players trying to earn their new favorite skin, the Grill Master skin. So the information here, this player went for 10 hours. These two players went for 11 hours each uh, per week. And then this player went for 12 hours a week. And it took these players either 40 weeks, 36 weeks, 35 weeks, or 32 weeks to earn their grill master skin. So this is the type of data we are going to be using in this video here. Now we will come back to this example at the end of the video. So first up, here's what we're working on today. We're going to be start starting with some data. We're going to be taking that data, making a scatter plot. And then from that scatter plot, we're going to be making a trend line or a line of best fit. And then using that line of best fit and writing an equation. These equations are either going to be in slope intercept form or point slope form, kind of depending on how the graph looks. So we'll get into that again in the video. So here we go. We have a table here. It shows the relationship between the number of minutes studying, time studying here in minutes, and the score that these that different students earned on a test. So from here, we can make a scatter plot. So the first point there uh, for 40 minutes earned a, a three points. 40 minutes went with three points. So there we go. Plotted that point there. 50 minutes gave another score of three. So both these people got three. 60 minutes goes with six. 60 minutes with a score of six. This is off a 10 point test, by the way, right? Uh, let's see here. 70 goes with seven score uh, right up in there, right? And then we have 80 goes with a score of seven. 90 goes with a score of 7, 7, 7, 7. 100 minutes goes with a score of 9. And then the last one, 110 minutes goes with a score of 10. So there's our scatter plot there. So let's go ahead and look at another example. The, the table here shows the total amount of money spent on healthcare in billions of dollars for the years 1970 through 1998. Make a scatter plot. So here we go. So uh, there's our data there. Now, when we go to make our scatter plot, right, we're going to go 1970 goes with 73.2, 1970, 73.2. 1980 goes with 247.3, 1980, 247.3. So on these ones here, because the numbers are kind of awkward, you are going to be doing a little bit of like estimating where the dot actually goes. On the last example, it went through both grid lines and this one here is a little bit trickier so 1980 that's going to be about 250 so here this is 200 so all the way there that's 200 and then three 300 would be like right in between 200 and 400 is this line here so you are doing some estimating where that dot goes and same thing with this 1998 well there's the year 2000 so 98 has got to go to the left of it just because this is 1995 here and this is 2000 so 1998 is going to be almost right in the middle but a little bit more cheating over towards the the 2000 mark there so there's a scatter plot there now you can fiddle with the variables a little bit like if you want to say, instead of doing 1970 here, if you just want to call this year zero, um, then you can. And then so year zero would be there. That's 1970. So 10 years after that would be 1980. 10 years after that, 1990. 10 years after that would be the year 2000. So it does make kind of a cleaner graph, um, but you are going to have to do a little bit of interpretation when you start working with the numbers with your fitted lines or how you model the data. So scatter plots. So we're going to have scatter plots are going to they're going to look different depending on the data here. So we're just looking at whether or not these scatter plots show a positive, a negative, or they have no relationship in the data. So before you make like a prediction equation, you need to know, well, is this actually doable, right? So this one here, you can see the data from left to right. It's going up. So that's going to be a positive relationship. Uh, this one here in the middle, it doesn't really have a direction that it's going. So we're going to call this one no relationship or no correlation is the other word we would use. And then this third one here from left to right, it's trending down. So that's going to be a negative relationship or negative correlation. Now this guy here, if you notice, it does have a pattern to it. So it goes up and then goes back down. 
It's not ma- it, it it's not a no correlation because it actually has a pattern to it, but it's not a linear pattern. It's not going strictly up or strictly down. So we're going to call this one at least for now. We're going to call this one non-linear. So these ones back here, linear and linear and no correlation. This one here is not a linear correlation. So we're not going to try and model it with a line. So we're just looking at different parts of a graph that we might see on a scatter plot here. So the gap in the graph, well, as you look down here, the gap, uh, well, we're missing some spots in there. So that's going to be a gap. Now we're looking for a cluster of information. Well, we got a bunch clustered up right in there. So we'll call that part there the cluster and then outliers. Those are ones. So so we can kind of see that all the all the data points kind of go right, right in through this area here. But this guy over here, he's way far away. He's going to be called an outlier. So now we're going to look at drawing a fitted line or line of best fit for data. So we've already done a scatter plot here. This one is number of activities versus number of years. And so when you go and do these, you want to kind of like figure out which way this data is trending. It's a slope type idea, right? So we're kind of looking like, oh no, too steep, not quite steep enough. Where is it? So we're looking at about right like that. So the data kind of goes that direction there. And again, we're looking from, from left to right. So we're kind of looking this way here. So that's, that's going to be our slope type thing that we're looking at, our, our trend line. So that's basically the slope of the graph there. And now what we're going to do is kind of slide this up and down to kind of see, well, now that we know the slope, we want to draw our line. So we have about the same number of data points above the line as below the line. So this line here, it kind of goes through like all of these ones right in here, pretty close. And then we got like three below the line and three above the line. So this is going to be a good trend line or fitted line or line of best fit. So, so we have our line now. And here's another one. We have a line on here already. We already have the, the trend line or the fitted line. And now we're going to write a prediction equation for this line. Now, this is really no different than finding a line, uh, finding the equation of a line from any old graph. So this isn't anything new. So we are looking here, we're going to use slope intercept form. And the reason why we can use the slope intercept form is we know what the y intercept is. It's right there on eight. So that's going to tell us we're using slope intercept form. If we didn't know the y-intercept, we'd be using point slope form. So here we go. Remember M, that's going to be your slope or the rate. And then the y-intercept is going to be the B. And that's also called the start amount. So this graph starts here at eight. So we already know the value for the B there. Um, but we're going to hold off on that for just a second. That'd be the last thing we type in. So here we go. So remember slope, that's going to be rise over run. So when, whenever we're doing rise over run, finding slope from a graph, we're looking for nice points. Now, what's nice about this one is that this uh, fitted line actually goes through two data points. So we are going to be using those. If they're available, use them. If not, you can use any other nice points. Like there's a nice point there. There's a nice point there. It's going through a grid line, uh, a vertical grid line and a horizontal grid line. So we know that's a nice point there. But we'll use these two. They're already on there piece of cake to use. So now we just count squares, right? So here we go. We're going to go down one, two, three, four. So that's a down four and then an over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So we're just counting squares from our graph, right? So the rise, it went down four. So that's going to be a negative four. And then the run, it went over or to the right eight. And now we go ahead and reduce, make it a little bit cleaner, right? So negative one half, negative four over eight reduces to one half or negative one half. So that's going to replace the M there for the slope. We have our X and now the Y intercept. Again, we already talked about that. It's going to be right there at eight and boom, there's your prediction equation. So here we're going to make a scatter plot with this data here. Now this data comes from like somebody having some guests over for like supper or whatever. Sometimes they have three or four or five or six or seven, eight guests over for, for dinner. And then this is how much it costs for, for all the food to feed those people. Now this one's going to be your turn to make a scatter plot. Now if you need help with the scale of the graph, hold off on pausing the video. If not, go ahead and pause the video right now, then come on back and see how you did. Now if you need help with the scale, here you go. Now go ahead and pause the video, make the scatter plot, then come on back and see how you did.
So here we go. So with three guests, it costs $35. So three guests is right there. And now we look for where the $35 is. Well, this one's a 20 right there, and that's a 40 right there. Now, 35, well, we know 30 is right smack dab in the middle between them. And then 35 is going to be between the 40 and the 20, but it's going to be closer to the 40 there. Now, for four guests, that's going to be $45. Again, we don't have a $45 line going across here. So it's going to be between the 60 and the 40, but closer to the 40. And we can do all the rest similarly like that. So make sure and get that in your notebook. Now that we have the scatter plot, now it's time to draw a fitted line for this data here. So go ahead, pause the video, make a fitted line, then come on back. So for making a fitted line on this one, it's actually pretty straightforward. Most of the points kind of go in a straight line. So you just follow those guys there. We end up with one above and one below. This one's kind of meant to be a slam dunk, an easy one for making a fitted line. So now that you have the fitted line, now it's time to write an equation for this fitted line. So go ahead and pause the video, make an equation for the line, then come on back and see how you did. So we do know that this is a line. So one of the forms for linear equations that we can use is slope intercept form. Now, this is actually not the best one to use. So we'll go over that a little bit later in the video as to why it's not the best one for this example here. So remember here, we got the Y equals and that's the, that's the cost. And then the X that goes with the number of guests, the M that's gonna be your slope. So remember with finding slope, two nice points, we got a bunch on the line here. Normally you pick two that are closest together. And so there's a point right there and a point right there. So then we're going to do rise and then overrun. Now with this one here, because these two points don't go through like 20 or 40 or 60 or 80, it's kind of hard to see how far up it went. So if that's the case, then you got to go back up to your table and look at the actual numbers. Oh, oh, okay. So here we go. It went from 35 to 45. Well, that's pretty easy. That went up by 10. And then this one, we can use the, the graph we want for one more guest here, or we can use the table again here. That's one guest there. So, so this one here, because they're on the, on the lines, you can use three to four, or you can use three to four from the table there. So now again, with slope, that's going to be rise over run. So that's going to be up 10 over one, 10 over one makes 10. So boom, there's our slope there. Now for the y-intercept, this one, again, same thing as over here with these points, we can't say exactly where it is. So if you feel confident that you can make a good guess, it does end up being five. So, but if you feel confident you can make a good guess, go for it. Now, if your teacher is like grading you on like accuracy and stuff and you guess wrong, well, you're going to get it wrong. So, so if you want to be actually accurate with this, you are going to use point slope form. So point slope form, we got the M. We already know that that's a 10 for the slope. And then this X1, Y1, it's any of these points on the line here. And you can just take this one right here. That was the 335 one. So you replace the X1 with a three, replace the Y1 with a 35, and there's your point slope form. Now, if you do want it in slope intercept form, just distribute the 10, 10 times X, 10 times three, 10 times X makes 10 X. 10 times three is negative 30 added to 35 does indeed make five. Now with these prediction equations, that's what we can do. We can actually make a prediction on how many guests for how much money or vice versa. So in this case here, if you have a hundred bucks, how many guests can you feed for a hundred bucks? Well, there's a couple of different ways of going about that. The first way that, or one of the ways is you can look at your, your graph here. So, right. So guests, that's the, or cost, that's the Y. So here's our Y axis here. There's a hundred bucks and it looks like it's going to be somewhere between nine and 10. Well, you're not going to feed like 0.5 of a guest. So you're just going to say, oh, it's nine. So that's a way of answering this question. The other way is remember this, this Y goes with cost. So the Y for, for this question here is gonna be $100. So you take your equation here and you replace Y with 100 like that. And then you just solve this equation here. And this is just a two-step equation. You wanna get X by itself. So undo the plus five with a minus five makes 95. And then divide by 10 to undo this multiply by 10. So you have 95 divided by 10 makes 9.5. And again, with people, you're gonna round down because you're not gonna feed half a person. Well, I suppose you could, like if there was you know a toddler or something that came over. So now we're gonna go ahead and circle back to the very first example we used. So remember we had some, some video game players and they were grinding for their, their favorite skin, the Grillmaster. And so some of them 
uh, went 10 hours a week, some went 11 hours a week, some went 12 hours a week. So this is how many weeks it took them to earn that skin. So we can go ahead and make a scatter plot for that. There, right, 10 goes with 40. 10 hours a week goes with 40 weeks to earn the skin. And then we have the other, other points here. And then next up, we would make a, a fitted line for this information here. And then after we have the fitted line, now we write an equation. Now, in this case here, we are not actually able to use slope intercept form. Why? Well, the y intercept is like way up here. It's like off of your screen. So you can't actually use slope intercept form. So you're going to have to use point slope form. So we're still going to find the slope first, right? Because we need to replace the m with a slope. So looking over here, here's a nice point here, and there's a nice point there, right? It goes through the grid lines left and right, up and down. So we're going to start here and we're going to count down and then we're going to count over. Now we do have to be really careful with our counting because these don't go by ones. They go by fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right? So when we count down, each square is five. So we're going to count by fives. So it's down 5, 10, 15, 20. So it went down 20. And then same thing on the x-axis. These also go by fives. So we got to count over by fives. Now on this one here, it would have been the same either way because they both go by fives. But a lot of times you're going to have a different y scale versus an x scale on word problems or like problems that have like a scenario that goes with them. So we do negative 20 over five, rise over run. The rise was down 20 over five. Now, if you did want to go off of the, these points here, because like this one right there, um, you can't really tell where it is. The line does go straight through it. So this is a good point here, but you can't tell from the graph where it is. So you would go to your table over here. And so here we're going, looking at the Y's, you're going from 40 down to 32. Well, that's going to be a down eight. And then from 10 to 12, that's another two hours there. So negative eight over two or negative 20 over five, it's still going to make four or negative four. So there's your slope there. And then the X1, Y1, well, let's just use this point right here. It's on the line. We know exactly what it is. Again, this would be another nice point, the 1520, but we'll use this one. It's cleaner information. We're not guessing, okay? So 10 replaces the X1, and then a 40 is going to replace the, the Y1 there. Now, if your teacher does say, no, 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 we, we, we're, we, I don't want you to leave it in point slope form, then you need to just take this and change it into slope intercept form. So start up by multiplying, distributing the negative four times X, negative four X, negative four times negative 10. Negative times negative is a positive. So makes a plus 40. And then just add like terms, right? We got the 40 and the 40. That's going to be 80 there for the, the B term or the, the Y intercept, which again was way up here off the screen. So again, with any of these scatter plots and fitted lines, you start with some information, make your scatter plot, draw the fitted line, and then just pretend it's like, you know, three weeks ago or whatever, when you were doing a graph to an equation and you're still going to do the same thing. Now, again, if you know the y-intercept, you'll use slope intercept form. If you do not know the y-intercept, then you do have to use point slope form.